In this video, I'll be covering final preparations of a human model in Blender before 3D printing it, although most of the points here will be relevant to any organic model, not just a human. Now, although you don't need to have watched the others, this video is part of a video series on generating a human from scratch, clothing it, posing it, and finally printing it. I have links to the other videos in the series in the description and at the end of this video. For this part in the series, I'm going to be using this model, which was designed by my brother as a character in Skyrim. If you want to see her in action, he has a Twitch channel focused mainly on Skyrim, which I'll link to below. She has a name, which I can't pronounce, but here it is on the screen now. So what's the point of this video then? Well, most models, or at least most complex models that get to this stage, probably have some issues that will affect the printing. Maybe break the printing completely, maybe not even allow it to slice. So let's have a look at this one and see what we can find. Now, firstly, of course, there's some things on the belt here. These are separate objects, and it's nearly always better to print those separately and glue them on afterwards. It reduces the support headaches and just makes it easier to paint afterwards as well. However, you can keep them on the model as long as they actually touch the model and intersect with it. And I think I'm going to do that in this particular video to keep it kind of shortish. Now you can also do the same thing with other items like clothing. A lot of people do this. They cut the clothes in half, print them separately, paint them separately, and then glue them back on and stick them together. I'm not going to do that either. In fact, I've never done that, but um, a lot of people do. You will also see people cut their models up into separate parts, as this allows for final models bigger than your printer. And it can also help with painting and finishing. If you want to do that, you should do it after we have done all this fixing up. And I'll put a link to my video on cutting up and keying organic models in Blender down below. Now this particular model was originally generated with Charmorph. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. As a result, there are several modifiers and things that make it more difficult to do some of the fixes that we need to do. So I recommend making a copy of the model, applying the Charmorph specific modifiers, and then working on the result. Now it's worth noting that uh, I, for the model, I need to actually get rid of nearly all of these, but we could keep the mask one, but it's not going to be easy to do. So all we need to do is go into X-ray mode and make sure we select everything. And then press M, new collection, and I'll call this printing. Okay, we now have a new collection over here called for printing but we probably should turn the old one off. You can't just apply the modifiers as you would like to, partly because of the shape keys and partly because of this. Let's see what happens when I do. Whoop. Oh, that goes wrong. So you can't do it like that. So if you want to apply these modifiers, the way to do it, control Z, and puts it back as she should be. What you should do, select her, I think, we will take the mask modifier off. We can always put it back on later. A better way to apply these modifiers is to just go to Object, Convert, Mesh. You see that's applied all the modifiers and it hasn't blown up the model. One of the most common problems that you're going to have with a model like this is that your normals are not the right way around. If you don't know what normals are, don't worry, you just need to know that they need to be the right way around. And basically, that means that we're checking that the outside is on the outside and the inside is on the inside. And it's amazingly easy this to go wrong while modeling. And by default, you can't see this happening. Blender has a very nearly easy way of checking for your normals. And you can select a setting under here with face orientation. And by default, this will show the outside of your model in blue and the inside in red. And the reason I say very nearly easy is that you can't keep this on permanently because you can't really work on a model when it's bright blue. But I have changed my Blender theme so it doesn't show any color for the outside and it still shows red for the inside. Which means I can keep it on all the time. And if you want to know how to do that, then let me know in the comments. So if I turn this on, you can see that this little bag thing is red and this means that it is inside out and would very likely cause issues with printing. Now to fix this we select the object, go into edit mode with tab and press 
A to select everything. It was already selected, but there you go. Now you can press Shift N, which recalculates the normals, usually. If it doesn't, you can do Mesh, Normals, and Flip instead. But now if we go back into Object Mode, it's not red anymore. Now you see that there are other areas that are red, right here in the, in the dress here, but that is the inside of the dress, so that's fine to be red. Quite often find individual faces that are red, and they have to be fixed just by flipping individual faces. Anyway, this looks much better now on the normals front. Okay, so that's good. Now, another particularly obvious problem with this model is that half of us sticking through the dress. In the previous videos in the series, I used a mask modifier to get that out of the way. If I select the model, you can see the mask modifier is here. And if I turn it on, it goes. But it also, as you can see here, removes quite a lot of the model. Now this is fine for rendering, but if we look down here, you can find that this is no way gonna print. There's big holes all over the place. Now, there are techniques for allowing you to continue with this. For example, maybe you just want to select the dress, go into edit mode, select a loop around the bottom, go extrude, press mouse click, M at center, and you can have it filled like that. This actually might be quite good. It may be what you want. It makes supporting it easier, has to be said. But it also may not be the look you want. It's not the look I want. So we'll undo that. So I'm not going to use this modifier. I'll get rid of it. We don't need it. And I'm going to use sculpting instead. Now, it's simple sculpting. Nothing to worry about. Very, very simple. With the model selected, let's go into sculpt mode. All we need to do is go to the smooth brush, which is this one, click on that. I think it's safer to have the strength somewhere in the middle like this. And you can increase or decrease the size of this circle by pressing F and dragging the mouse. I think it's fine as it is. And then brush over it. You can also use the snake hook brush, which is useful sometimes. You can just grab it and you can push it in, pull it out, push it in. Okay. And that should be fine. That's all we need to do in sculpt mode. Let's go back into object mode and see what else we've broken. Let's have a look at those boots. They're not particularly good boots anyway, but um, her legs are sticking into those boots. We don't know how far down they go. Um, looks like they go down a fair bit. Now this might print fine. It might not. It might need lots of support. They might be a bit brittle. What I'm going to do is one of two things. I can either remodel these so that they intersect with her leg as it is, or I can just close the boots off. And that's what I'm going to do because it's nice and simple. So let's select a boot and go into edit mode. And we can see there's a solidify modify there and also way too much geometry and that's my fault and something i should have thought about when i was modeling this earlier but i think what i'm going to do is apply in object mode the solidify modifier and then turn off the model zin zin whatever her name is and then select the boot again going to edit and I'm going to select just the loop around here you can't really see it very well but chances are it's going to work alt click it worked now we extrude press click m for merge at center there we go we have filled up that boot if we turn it back on It looks a little bit more likely to print. I'll just quickly do the other boot too. Okay, so there we have the boots looking okay, I think. 
Okay, so let's have a look at this dress. You can see immediately it has zero thickness, which will not print. So we'll have to fix that with the solidify modifier. And I probably modeled this dress a little bit far away from the model. So it's going to look a bit funny, I think, but I'm not going to worry about it now. So let's add a solidify modifier. Add modifier and select solidify. Now, as soon as we put the solidify on, we can see there is another issue here already. There's another error in this dress. This does not look right. And I know what that is. We'll right click on it, shade flat. And now we can see this dress is not as smooth as we thought it was. Whenever you're 3D printing something, you have to have shading set to flat, not smooth. Your printer will see what is flat regardless of whether you have shading set to smooth or to flat. And somewhere in the modeling process, this dress was set to shade smooth. I'm glad I found that. All right, here's our solidify modifier on here, and we can change the thickness. Now, if you hold the shift key down, it gives you a little bit more control. I'm going to make it bigger than it should be so that the dress intersects the model. Just makes life easier. Now you can see it's done something a little bit funny to the dress down here. I'll turn the modifier off. It's actually made it grow. Now, under the thickness clamp, if I click this over, it should fix that. And so it does. That's something worth remembering. And we'll fix the problem with this not very smooth dress with a subdivision surface modifier a bit later. But basically, that is a dress that should 3D print now. Okay, so that's the obvious things done. But there still might be errors in the mesh itself that can cause you issues. So let's have a quick look at the 3D print plugin for Blender. This is a plugin that shipped with Blender, so you should already have it, but it might not be enabled because it isn't by default. So to check it is enabled, go to Edit, Preferences, and then we go to Add-ons, we put it in 3D dash print, and it's this 3D print toolbox, and you have to make sure that's enabled. That's what you need to do, and then close the window. Now, if we select the main model, and we press N to get this N panel up, you should find that we have a 3D print tab. If you select that, and you see lots of little options here. What I'm going to do is go into edit mode by pressing tab. And then I'm going to do check all. This might take a little while, not too long. Now here you can see that it's found 1196 non-manifold edges. I'm pretty sure that's because of the mask modifier that I was using earlier. Now I'm going to turn the model around for some modesty and take the dress off. This is the lines left by the mask modifier when I was playing about with it in the previous video. I think that's causing us the problem here. But nevertheless, it's found these non-manifold edges. It's also found lots of other things. Now these aren't really going to cause you a problem normally for 3D printing, except of course the overhang faces, but it's a bit irrelevant fixing that in Blender because you're going to change it in your slicer anyway. So what do we do now then? You could, in cleanup, just make manifold here. But I have found in many cases it can make the problems worse than you already had them. So I like to get this down as low as possible before hitting the make manifold button. And we're going to do that by selecting the whole model with A. And then we're going to go mesh, clean up, merge by distance. And you can see, whoop, you can see it's cleared 910 vertices. If we press check all again on our 3D print plugin, we'll recalculate the whole lot again. And now it's found 420. So we've got rid of most of them. There's still some left. You can get 3D print plugin to show you where those are. If I click on this, it's actually a button. It shows me down here. There's probably some inside as well. Now, 
they are not particularly worrying to me so i'm just going to let it fix them itself at least try to so we're going to in the cleanup area click on the make manifold and let's have a look and see what it did i will alt a to unselect everything i'll turn the dress back on just for modesty's sake for youtube and it, if i go into object mode that looks okay so now i think we're pretty much done apart from the problem we have found with the resolution on this dress so let's add a subdivision surface modifier add modifier subdivision surface we'll increase the levels in the viewport now bear in mind when you increase the levels here and the smoother it gets the more vertices and faces you'll have so you need to have enough ram or you might find that blender crashes you're probably going to be okay with this to be honest but let's just turn on statistics they're over here on that button and you can see we've already got two million triangles here so on a slow computer this is going to get slow it's going to get worse because i'm going to do the same thing for the main model now this isn't a particularly good computer i'm on at the moment we'll try it add modifier subdivision surface It'll take a while because, as I said, this is an old computer, so we have to wait. And there you go. That's pretty smooth. Certainly smooth enough 3D printing. I would say that somewhere in the line, this model, who has had a bit of a life, it has to be said, has got some funny sort of strangeness. You can see these funny little curves and things. You can get rid of those in sculpting, and that's probably what I would normally do, but. We can also do it with a smooth modifier. Select the smooth modifier, move it to the top, and in increase the repeats. It's very subtle, but it has smoothed that out a lot better now. So there you go. I think we're ready. What we need to do is now show how to export this for 3D printing. Now we've got lots of different objects. These are separate objects, that's a separate object. Actually, even that's a separate object, that's a separate object. So we need to export them all. And the easiest way to do that, assuming you've got no cameras and lights in your scene, is to put X-ray mode on and just press A and it will select everything. But however you do it, you just need to select all the parts of the model that you want to print. We go over here. File, export, STL. And then you want to make sure you press the selection only button. Otherwise, everything in your scene will be exported. Give uh, a, a location. I'm just going to put it in downloads. And click the export STL button. Now, if there's a lot of triangles like there are here, it will take a bit of time. As you can see, the, my little whirly, roundy thing going around. I just move the mouse wheel backwards and forwards to see whether it's finished or not. And there you go, it will have finished. Now, all you need to do is load this up into your slicer. If there's any additional problems, the slicer will probably going to fix them. Lychee or Litchi, as they like to call it, can fix a model. And I know Chitubox can do it, and Chitubox is actually better at it. Um, but also if you're on Windows, it's very well worth putting something through 3D Builder, which is free on Windows. It's extremely good at repairing models. But anyway, if you want to have a look at the other videos in this series, I recommend you start with the first one, which is in the top right, how to generate a human. I hope this was helpful. The next video in the series will be about the full workflow. And then, thank God, this series will be finished. But uh, Hopefully this was useful for you. Please feel free to ask comments. I usually do reply. And thank you for watching.